Now let's look at another very common op amp topology, and this is the non-inverting amplifier. Now this is an interesting circuit. Notice what we've done here. You still see negative feedback, except in this case we now have RF, we've got an R1 resistor connected to ground, and our VS and RS resist, source and resistor have now been moved to the non-inverting input terminal. So let's now analyze this, once again, using the three rules. So looking at this, I know that my input currents must be equal to zero. Well, if the input current of the op amp is equal to zero, that means the current through R sub S is equal to zero. And that means I've got zero volts across that resistor, which means if this voltage is VS, then my voltage at my non-inverting input must also be equal to Vs. And I've got negative feedback, I've got a, I've got a uh, virtual short circuit, that means I must have Vs here at the inverting terminal as well. So I've applied two rules so far. Now let's go and let's write KCL equations. Rule three, I don't want to write a KCL equation for VO, but I can certainly go through and write a KCL equation at the inverting input. So let's define our currents. And so in this case, what we're going to get for my KCL equation at the inverting input is that zero minus V sub S over R1 must be equal to Vs minus Vo over Rf. I rearrange some terms to bring the Vo terms on one side and Vs on the other, and what we will get is the following. That Vo will be equal to R1 plus Rf over R1 times Vs, or just equal to 1 plus Rf over R1 times Vs. So Vo is equal to 1 plus Rf over R1 times Vs. This is the equation for the non-inverting amplifier. And in this case, there's no negative sign. In this case, the closed loop gain is equal to 1 plus RF over R1. We also note that the minimum magnitude of ACL In this case, must be equal to 1 if Rf is equal to 0 or R1 is equal to infinity. So I can't go down to a minimum magnitude of 0 like I did with the inverting amplifier. I can only go down to a minimum magnitude of 1. And in fact, we're going to look at an application of this in just a few minutes. A very interesting application of this idea of a closed loop gain of unity. Okay? Closed loop gain of one. What does that mean? Well, you might think to yourself, well, the gain of one means it's the same voltage, right? Why not use a piece of wire? Well, it turns out actually if we want to do a closed loop gain of one, there's actually a very, very useful application of that. Let me go through and let's, let's look at how we can apply an op amp that does that. Let's say I've got the following circuit.
Okay. Let's say you wanted to take an input voltage and generate a smaller output voltage using a voltage divider. And in fact, this is a very common kind of thing any sort of circuit designer or engineer would do. So what I've got here is I've got a 5K resistor here, a 5K resistor here. This is nothing more than a voltage divider. So VR is just going to be equal to 5K over 5K plus 5K times 10 is equal to 5 volts. So I've simply taken my input voltage, I've divided it in two with a voltage divider to give me an output voltage of 5 volts. So let's assume you, you needed 5 volts in a particular circuit design. You build that voltage divider. It works great until you connect something to it. What's the problem here? Okay. What if I were to connect this to some sort of load? Let's do this. Here's my VR voltage. And now I'm going to take my circuit and I'm going to connect it to something else. So there's some other circuit. And I don't know what that circuit is, but whatever that circuit is, it has its own resistance. So let's say we've got a load resistance of 5 kilo ohms that is characteristic of whatever we're connecting our little circuit to. So you look at that and say, okay, I've got a 5 volt circuit, now I'm connecting it to this other circuit, into this load, except it's not making 5 volts anymore. Because now you've got current flowing from this node into that load resistor. The KCL equation changes. In fact, what do I have? These two resistors are in parallel. So in this case, what I've got is 5K in parallel with 5K is equal to 2.5 kilo ohms. So now if I calculate VR, VR is now equal to 2.5K divided by 5K plus 2.5K times 10 is equal to 3.33 volts. So my desired 5 volts has just dropped down to 3.3 volts due to what we call the loading effect. what is the loading effect? What that says is if I connect a load to a circuit and I load this particular node and pull current out of it, I'm going to change the voltage on that node. That's what KCL tells me. It's going to change my nodal equations. So you say, oh, well, it's not 5 volts anymore. That's not a problem. What I'll do is I'll go through and I will adjust the value of that resistor and I'll get it back to 5 volts. And then your supervisor says, that won't work because we need to take this circuit and connect it to different loads of different values. R sub L may be different every time. Maybe it'll be 1K. Maybe it'll be 10K. We just don't know in advance. And so what we'll find is for every load resistor we connect this to, we'll get a different value of VR. And we can't design it ahead of time because we don't know what the load's going to be. So what do we do? Well, it turns out there is a way around the loading effect. So in this case, if the output load changes a VR, can we fix that? Yeah, let's do this. What if we took a circuit like this? Let's take an op amp. And let's take the non-inverting configuration we just looked at. And let's go ahead and let's assume we've got Vs at the non-inverting input. R1 is infinity, Rf is zero. And so I just wind up with a wire connected to the output. Well, in this case, I've got Vs here, Vs here. Therefore, Vo is equal to Vs. In other words, I've got a gain of one. 
This is my example I was looking at a minute ago for the minimum value of closed loop gain. We call this circuit a unity gain buffer. Because the gain is equal to one. It's also sometimes called a voltage follower. And the idea behind that is the output voltage follows or copies the input voltage. So voltage follower or unity gain buffer. Let's take that and let's insert that into this circuit. Let's do this. Let's take our reference circuit. Our original reference circuit, which unloaded, gave us 5 volts. And notice all I've done here is I've simply flipped this upside down. Now let's connect our load resistor. OK, what does this do? Well, in this case, the input current of the op amp is zero. Therefore, connecting this op amp to my VR node doesn't change the voltage at all. So VR is still going to be equal to 5 volts. And if I've got 5 volts here, I've got a virtual short circuit. I've got 5 volts here, which means I've also got 5 volts here. There's my VR voltage. And now it doesn't matter what the value of RL is. I can make this 1K, 10K, 1000K. Doesn't matter. The value of RL doesn't affect the output voltage of the op amp. And so in this case, the reference voltage at the output of the op amp is independent of the value of R sub L. So it turns out that the unity gain buffer of amplifier with a gain of 1 turns out to be incredibly useful. Because we don't care about the fact we're not getting any amplification out of it. What we care about is that it allows us to isolate our load so that it doesn't cause a loading effect on this node. So you will see this kind of unity gain buffer or voltage follower used constantly. It's one of the most common circuits in, used in circuit design, variations of this idea. So you will see this kind of thing used a very, very great deal. And uh, you know, it's, uh, you'll sometimes also see it called uh, impedance transformation. The idea being that I see, in effect, infinite resistance looking into the input of, a, of, a, uh, of an op amp because I've got zero current going in. And so R is equal to V over I if I is zero. So I've got infinite resistance looking in. And looking into here, I see a voltage source. And a voltage source you can think of as having a resistance of zero because as far as a voltage source is concerned, Okay, if you think about the effective resistance is V over I, and you know, it doesn't matter what the current is, then in this case you can consider a voltage source as being a, a resistance of zero. In fact, Thevenin's theorem says that. What is the resistance of a voltage source? If I've got this and I ask you what is REQ from a voltage source to ground, and this goes to zero, then that just becomes a wire. And so the resistance of a voltage source is zero. Okay? So in this case, I go from a very high input resistance to a zero output resistance, very low output resistance. So you'll see variations of this idea. If you ever take a course in electronics, you'll see this is called impedance transformation. But it's the same idea. You are putting in a unity gain buffer that gives you isolation so the changes in the load resistor don't affect that node. Okay? So, once again, you'll see lots of very common variations on this non-inverting amplifier. Next time we will look at some more 
or rather uh, a few other rather interesting different topologies and circuits that are very commonly used in, uh, in op-amp design. And uh, just kind of give you some idea of some of the versatility of the huge variety of circuits you can build using op-amps. So I'll show you just a few examples next time.